everyone, welcome to Mr. Otter's studio. Today I'm going to show you a really cool way to paint clouds. I thought since it was Friday, we could take a break from our drawing tutorials and do something a little bit different. And this is a really cool technique where we're gonna paint clouds using red, yellow, and blue. All you need are basic watercolor supplies. So I'm just gonna be using the normal praying set that I always use and just a round brush. So really quick, if you have watercolor paper, you definitely need to use it for this tutorial. If you try to use normal just drawing paper, it's going to get all wrinkled and probably just kind of torn apart by the time we're done. So try to get some watercolor paper too. All right, hopefully you've got all of your watercolor supplies ready. You have your paper, your watercolor paints, and your water. But the first thing I want you to do is to make some puddles in your tray, like I have, and then I want you to add red to one, yellow to the next, and then blue to the last one. So we wanna have all of these colors ready for us to use. And then blue. And this is a really cool way to paint clouds. So hopefully I can show you some pictures of the painter who, who taught the workshop that I went to. I'll just insert some of them at the end so you can see what it looked like. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is paint your entire sky with water. You want it to be really, really wet. This is why watercolor paper is really important. If you were painting a landscape and you had mountains or something under here, you would just be careful not to paint over those things. So I'm just gonna move the bottom just pretending there's like some kind of landscape there. And this is not good lighting, so sorry, but these videos really, I just wanna show you these techniques and then I want you to experiment with it. All right, now we've got it, it's all wet, and now I'm gonna drop in my first color, which is actually going to be yellow. The first color that we're gonna drop in is not the color you would normally think. Yellow, so go ahead and grab the yellow and think of this as being in the shadow area of your cloud. So if I have a cloud over here, the shadow is gonna be down here. Uh, maybe there's another cloud here with some shading. Need more yellow and a little bit here. It's really spreading out. So maybe I used a little bit too much. And then go ahead and grab some red. Normally I would put these further apart from each other because we do need some sky in here, but that's okay. And the red I'm just gonna place right over the yellow, kind of in the middle of it. I want the yellow to be more around the edges, so I'm just gonna let it keep bleeding. And then the last color that I'm going to be putting in is blue. And I'm putting it right over the red. And what happens is it kind of mixes with the red and makes a really cool gray. And right now you're probably thinking, this does not look like clouds, but don't worry. I actually kind of missed a spot here with water. Don't worry, it will look like clouds. And also part of this technique lets Part of this technique is letting it sit for a little bit and kind of bleed and move around. And then we're gonna take a blue and we're gonna come back in and we're going to define where the sky is. Because right now it just looks kind of strange, right? We're not exactly sure what's happening. I kind of think it looks really cool, but it doesn't look like clouds quite yet. And what's really going to make this look like clouds is when we bring in the sky. So normally, with these videos, I'm trying to do them live and just, not live, but not really edit a ton and speed things up and slow things down. But since this does take a little bit of time, I am going to pause this and then just come back when it's dry. And what I recommend you do during that time, if you're just waiting for it to dry, is to draw, to paint, sorry, another sky. Using the same technique and then you can try it in both. So maybe do like two sections or something like that. So let's let this keep drying and then we'll come back in with our blue sky. And if you don't wanna wait for it to dry, you can always just grab a blow dryer. <laughs> All right, I used a blow dryer just to kind of speed the process up a little bit. Now we're going to bring in the blue sky and then we're gonna form these clouds. So I'm gonna be using this blue, but I'm gonna add a tiny bit of orange to it. So I don't want it to be like, look too fake. I don't want it to be gray though, I do want it to be blue. So I'll just kind of test it down here and see what it looks like. Okay, 
and it's an okay color. All right, now if this was my landscape, so let's say these are like mountains down here and that's where these are stopping. What we're going to do is bring in the sky. So this is gonna be a cloud and I'm just gonna define it. And then this is gonna be the bottom of another cloud and here is another cloud right here. So if you look at clouds, you know, the shape that they make, it's kind of crazy and unpredictable. So. I might leave a few little wisps in here. Also, we are gonna come back in here and we'll maybe soften up some edges. And then we'll make some edges a little bit harder. So there's that cloud. I'm just gonna come into the bottom of this one. It doesn't have to be as bumpy as this. I mean, <laughs> there's not really no rule we're following here. This is not a cloud that exists, just in my head. Okay, I'm bringing it just down to this line that I painted. Now, what I wanna do is come in here with my brush, I'm rinsing it off, blotting it off, and then just soften up some of these edges. We don't want to have these super hard edges where the clouds meet up with the sky. Maybe in some places we do, and then in other places we don't. So with a damp brush, I'm just coming along those edges and I'm just softening them up just a little bit. Like in here, how it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. I definitely want to soften some of these lines up in here. So I am using a smaller brush for this part. And sometimes I think it's good to have these hard edges and other times you might just wanna soften it up just a little bit. So if you look at the sky, sometimes you can see these really bold parts, but then other times it kind of fades a little bit into the sky. And that is the technique. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but hopefully you get the gist of how to paint these clouds. Let me show you an example that um, we did in the class that I went to. I just want to fix this. It's hard for me to see even what I'm painting right now. It's so dark. I probably should have looked at some clouds, but anyway, this one looks a lot better than that one, but so you kind of get where the light would be coming from on this. Let's just smooth that out a tiny bit there. Okay. I'm going to just insert some of these pictures that I had from the plain air painting thing that I went to. So here are some of the paintings, and I'll put his name in the comments so you can see who he was, and it was an amazing um, tutorial, and I'm pretty sure his name was Al Rounds, but I'm, I, figure, I think I'm mixing that up with something, so I'll just make sure I get his name right. Anyway, thank you so much for painting with me. Why don't you try painting some more clouds like this, maybe with a landscape underneath, and again, here are some of those images from the workshop I went to, and this is what it looks like when you have a really cool land. Thank you so much for painting with me today on Mr. Otter Studio. I hope it was successful for you and you can use this technique in some of your paintings. Uh, please post your images to Instagram using hashtag Mr. Otter Studio and I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.